two great British pastimes. Number one, the English country garden. It's something one can relax in. Something one can develop. It's something one can take great pride in. <coughs> Number two, the model railway. It's also something one can relax with. Something one can develop. And it's something one can take great pride in. Let's put those two together. Well, all brilliant stuff, and we are going to see loads and loads and loads of that stuff during the course of this series. Now then, I want to tell you a story, and this story concerns an old uncle of mine, Uncle Dick, in fact, who, in the early 70s, used to collect large-scale German outline model trains. And he had a huge layout in a huge attic in a huge house. A few years later, however, he found himself having to downsize somewhat. She gave him the elbow. And so he moved into a small flat, and unfortunately, the railway was all put into boxes and stored in a cupboard. Now then, a few years after that, entered long-lost nephew and godson of said uncle. He was me. Hello, uncle, said I. Hello, godson, he said. And during a chat about this and that, I revealed that I quite liked model trains. Aha, said the uncle. Have I got the thing for you? And it's all pretty fantastic stuff, isn't it? I mean, really, really nice. But I've never really had the space to put this railway out to its full extent. Until now, let's look at the facts. This garden is about 40 foot by 20 foot. It's not in the greatest of conditions. Over here is a rather dilapidated shed, for instance. There's some tatty ivy creeping over this fence. And as you can see, I had rather a good Christmas last year. Now, we left the border for a year just to see what we grow, um, and nothing much happened, to be honest. That bush has yellow plants in spring, and apart from that, nothing else. Trees seem better days, and up at this end of the garden is where Ale Landai used to stand. It's the only thing I know the name of, and we cut it down within weeks of moving in. So, basically, this garden needs landscaping. What better time to put a garden railway in? A couple of points, though. I know nothing about gardening, I know very little about model railways. Isn't this good? I want one of these. Well, in fact, I'm probably going to get one of these in a few weeks. If you want to get into the subject, then this is where you need to start. This is a shop that specialises in garden railways. There's a few of them around the country. I found this particular one listed in the back of a specialist magazine. I tell you, it is absolutely stuffed to the gills full of goodies. Talk about a kid in a sweet shop. stuff I've got is electric, which is very nice, very jolly, um, easy to use, but I've got a leaning towards steam, at least I think I have, um, and uh, just looking at the stuff that you've got here, I think probably I'm going to take this one, I think. Would that be the right choice? That's around about the £2,000 mark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the, the, the prices on the locomotives tend to relate more to the detail and the amount of work that went into them. Um, if you bear in mind that this engine here is a scale model of a locomotive that ran on the Leica Manifold Railway, right? these three engines are not scale models, they are representations of steam engines. Right. And therefore, because of the, 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 the lack of detail, if you like, on these, the price can be brought down to something a little more reasonable. You're looking at around about £1,000 for that, yeah. and this one you're looking at just under £500. Oh, very nice. What about that little green loco, then? How much is that? You're talking uh, something in the region of £150 for a locomotive like that. Right. Um, 
very, very simple, mass-produced, um, nothing dreadfully complicated about it. Could I make my own? Are there kits available for steam locomotives, there, as there are for electrics? There are. Um, it's probably best to start with a ready-built locomotive, because uh, in, in a short period of time you'll get to know the locomotive quite well. Um, you'll learn how they work, you'll learn how they operate, and you'll learn how they're put together. Um, you could then consider buying a kit from someone like uh, the company that manufactures these engines. They do a range of kits which include the body and the valve gear and the cylinders and pistons, which allows a home builder to put the thing together really only using a screwdriver. They come ready painted um, and it's, it's quite, quite a nice way of starting in, in you're beginning to touch on the world of model engineering. Over two and a half thousand pounds for a model railway engine. It's a rich man's game, isn't it? Well, not necessarily. For instance, how about this American outline switcher, as they call them, under 80 pounds? We call them shunters, and if you want a charming little shunter, how about this for under 40 pounds? Easy to assemble, apparently. And if you're into kit making, how about this Welsh Highland Railway Bagnall tank engine? At least it will be once this kit's finished. It'll look something like this and will cost you £175. Well, one thing I've discovered, there is a quite bewildering amount of material available to you if you want to get into this hobby. For example, look at this tunnel portal cast out of concrete. Nice, isn't it? It is actually quite heavy, although I am obviously making light work. Now, I can't pretend but I'm going to build this layout all on my own. That would just be stupid. So I have got what I like to call an expert. And my expert is called David Pratt, and he's right here. And he has built garden railways all over the world, of all shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. And he has quite literally written the book about the subject. Would I be right in saying that? Yes, thank you very much. All right, what's so special about garden railways, David? What's special about them is that they're trains and they can be huge, they can be small, they can be any country in the world, Alaska to Australia, and it's out in the open. You can make models out of bits of plastic, drain pipes, you can have electricity, live steam. It, it can be all things to all men, all people, because women and children can enjoy it too. So you see, Mark, it's just like a real railway. Yeah, except this railway's got real ballast and it's got a real so station. You. You're going to have real ballast, you're going to have real track like this, you're going to have real estate, you're going to have cuttings that have to be dealt with and drained, you're going to have certain gradients that can't be changed, you're going to have stations, you're going to have to have special equipment for when it rains and when it's snowy, and you're going to have to take care of the railway just like the real railways do. Oh, I don't know, you know, civil engineering, that sounds a little bit frightening to me. No, 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 no. we take it logically, one step at a time. Right. First thing we've got to do, go and do a survey of the ground, just like they all do, and well, if we're quick, it. yeah, we can do some measuring, we'll catch the 1432. I, it's not light, you know, this stuff. Well, this is a garden, um, David, as I was saying, and uh, are you all right with that notepad, mate? Yes, though. Fine. Now, I've, I've sort of got an idea in my head how this is all going to work, and I thought, if I have the railway coming yeah, out of just, there... Just a minute. Before we do anything at all, we've got to survey, look at the ground. It's a real railway yeah. in the real world, yeah. just like Brunel did. Yeah. OK? Yeah. Now, why don't we start over there. Yeah, all right. Okay? Go on. Lead the way, Macduff. How's that, David? Down a bit, Mark. Down. That's it. All right. Mark it. Mark it there. Mark it there. That's good. Consider it marked. What, uh, you know, I sort of think I get the general principle, but what actually are we doing? Well, you're putting a level all the way round the garden so that we've got a datum line that we know is level. A what line? A datum line. What's that? It's a line all round the garden that is level. And we oh, can see. measure down from that to put the railway where we need to put it. OK, I think I've got that. 
What is this? This is a theodolite, isn't it? Sort of. It's a simpler one, but you'll see it used on motorways, you see it used on the real railway, yeah. because we're in the real world building a real railway. All right, well, this is all very well with you and me being here, but it seems to me that this is a uh, sort of thing that would take two people to operate, would that be right? Yeah. So is there something maybe a bit simpler? Okay. don't worry. There are lots of other ways that one man can do that are nice and simple. All right. Do you know what, David? I think even my small brain has grasped the concept of what we're doing here. It's simply a case, isn't it, of working our way round the garden, would I be right? with a very long spirit level that we have here and some sticks and hammering in the sticks to the point at which the top of them is, is level, is that That's right? That's right, and then you've got levels all across your garden and it's a very low-tech way, except you need a spirit level. Right, and you need a long spirit level? No, you can have a short spirit level and a long piece of wood. Yes, um, all right then, well what about if the garden undulates like that a lot? Well, you can have a long piece of stick or longer and if the garden comes up higher you just put a piece of wood or something there anything to mark the level and what about what you know if it's concrete you know some people have paving stones yeah, yeah well then you might put a brick or something to show you where level is but in essence we're doing the same thing that we did with the theodolite we are finding a true level right across the whole garden we need to know where level is now this is the sort of technology I like Cut down plastic bottle, gaffer tape, hose pipe and water. I know what you're thinking, nurse, but this, in fact, is yet another means of measuring the level of your garden, is it not, David? Yes, and it's the most low-tech thing you could think of. Now, this is clever. I like this. How does this work? Well, the water will stay level in the pipe wherever we go. Yeah. Even the Romans didn't know about this, and so they built aqueducts everywhere. Right, so if I go down a bit... Then the water will fill it up. Yeah, which I can see is happening before our very eyes and we can reverse that process there and yours will start filling up, which it is doing right on cue. Well done, Walter. And so we're level everywhere in the garden. OK, well, I'll go that end, you go that end. OK. Well, we've done all our measuring in the garden, or surveying, as I like to call it, and uh, we've come here into the kitchen to commit a few of those ideas down onto paper. This is David Pratt, by the way, who's our expert, who's going to be guiding us through the whole construction process. Um, but while we jot down these few ideas, why don't you have a look at this? Uh, I'm Trevor Goodman, and this is my Gage 3 Railway here at Thurnby in Leicestershire. Most of this is it, well, it has to be built uh, to the contours of the, uh, of the landscape. And as you can see, this was a, a good site because we had a, a general slope uh, running away into the far right-hand corner. Uh, so we had, uh, uh, we had to strike a balance between an operating height. Uh, so we've got probably something like four and a half to five feet at the bottom uh, and two feet at the top. <laughs> Uh, in an ideal world, if you're putting a railway onto a flat surface, um, then you would try and have the constant level of around about four and a half feet, because uh, obviously that would be uh, more easy for the, the type of membership which we have. We don't want to really be bending or sitting down, uh, you know, leaning down on our knees and what have you. Uh, yeah, I mean, we try and make it as scenic as possible, uh, but as we have to lift things out every time we finish with them and carry them down next time we run, there's a limit on how much uh, we want to keep putting out all the while. So, uh, obviously, we just keep it down to a minimum, but at the same time, to have it to try and look reasonably realistic. One of the uh, problems, if you like, that when people are running steam engines, uh, they're, con they're really intent on the controls in their cab. Uh, and if you've got too much line side stuff, such as signals, um, I mean, at the end of the day, we'll probably have one or two signals lying flat on the side because people have caught them with their arm as they're going round. Well, I think really with uh, people that are interested in steam railways, um, uh, it, it goes back to when you were a young lad, I suppose. Um, if you lived near a railway and you did a bit of train spotting and you travelled around, uh, you had an interest in the countryside that it ran through, the infrastructure, everything about it. And when you try to emulate that to a limited extent with modelling, uh, especially if you can model steam, as we do in Gage 3, 
uh, on a scenic background, then we can appreciate those things which we enjoyed when we were young. Right, we've tried to make it as easy as possible to rail coaches. Uh, eight uh, wheels can be a little bit time consuming trying to put each wheel onto the track. So we've just devised this simple wooden slide here which tapers out into the size of the track at the end, two and a half inches. Drop it on and roll them down. So with 20 coaches, how long does it take? Just three minutes. Simple as that. Uh, now that was nice and something I'm really going to try and aim for. Now this is the idea that I've got um, David, we've had a little think, we've drew, drawn all our measurements out. Uh, we've, we've both agreed to move the shed round to that fence, haven't we, so that yeah. we can get a loop here. That's it. Um, my track's going to come out here and sweep round in that sort of curve, yeah? Yeah. Uh, along to the station there and then it's going to go up round the rockery there down past the pond, round the pond, underneath a bridge, which I, I always like bridges, and maybe a bit of a tunnel here, is going to go back underneath that track there to the other platform there, yeah? yeah. And then double track back into the shed there. We'll put the pond stroke harbour there. What's wrong with that? That's all right. That's good, because there are two ways to do a railway. One is a big circle, and the other one is a dog bone. And right. what you've done, yeah. you've made a dog bone. Yeah. And you've bent it round a corner, which is quite clever. Yeah. You've also crossed over here, which gives added interest. Yeah. The problem with this, though, is that you've also built yourself a garden wall all the way around your garden. You've separated the railway from the garden. And good garden railways are integrated into their garden. Well, my thinking here, um, David, is that I want this railway to be raised, yeah. um, yet I don't want it all to sit on posts, mm -hmm. um, mainly because I have something of a bad back and I don't want to be constantly bent over. So I do want to get it up to some sort of um, eye level. OK, so the bulk of the railway is going to be, say, 24 inches to 30 inches off the ground. Yeah. Then you could come off of that. Yeah. You could have your viaduct... Yeah. in the corner and you could then go into the shed with the railway through there and have your parking tracks sidings inside your shed yeah okay okay and what i quite like to have are Originally you had quite a large paved area around there, but we've compromised, haven't we, really, with these stepping stones, just to give us a bit more grass, because, as I m mentioned to you, I have a two-year-old son, Freddie, who I expect is going to become a professional footballer at some stage, and uh, so obviously he's going to need plenty of uh, penalty practice area. Well, you know, I love it. I think Freddie's going to love it. Uh, there is, however, one other person in the equation. This is my partner, Sophie. Uh, now, while I tell Sophie all about our exciting developments, why don't you watch this? Well, I'm Cedric Jodrell, and the name of the railway is the Leafy Gorge and Border Railway. Well, it's, it's always been a hobby of mine, Newton trains, and, and I never had room to, to produce one inside because I tried to O oh, O oh, outside and it didn't work very well and HO didn't work very well, so I decided the bigger gauge was the better one. And, of course, now it's become a hobby outside, rather. 
But you don't always get the weather to go with it, that's the trouble. Well, of course, you have to get the, uh, you know, the garden permission before you start to interfere with the garden, but it, it did start at just a, a continuous loop round the garden uh, with a triangular junction that takes you onto a return loop to fetch you back onto continuous loop again. It's, it's just a variety of running movements, like, you know, it's, uh, which is not a lot, uh, but it suits me. I decided I wasn't going to cross any paths, only really where I had to, and this is why there's no one level crossing with a step up and the rest on the you step over, you go over the top. Mainly freight trains. I have two passenger coaches which are on mixed trains with now and again, but I've never been interested in passenger trains. I like loading goods wagons up and producing loads for them. Well, the buildings are mainly polar, except for one or two which my son made. The one that made a slate over there and this one that's made of stone glued together down here, which looks like he wants a wash at this time of year. But the rest of them are polar buildings made from kits. And you know, it's, it's just a hobby. It's pleasant. You can do the weeding while the train's running about. You see, but that's, that's yeah, it's my hobby. I like it. Yeah. good idea if you have to have switches remote from your control position is to put them in an ordinary domestic sandwich box. It's quick, simple and waterproof. Well, it's only a rockery. She'll be fine, she'll be fine. Believe it or not, that's all the easy stuff done. All the hard work is still to come. I think this could be a good time to leave it. See you next time. Sophie!